Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Please stand if you are able. You are the treasured people of the Lord. A people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart and teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, you are the bread of life. Work in us by your Holy Spirit that we may be nourished and strengthened by your word. For we gather in the name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Amen. And let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another.
The sky was black as midnight In the middle of that day They laid our Lord and Savior In the grave On that first day They walked away And thought all hope was gone What would life be like from that day on On the second day Abandoned Lost and all alone They wandered like a child Without a home But thanks to God our Father the stone was rolled away He gave us life Beyond the second day From the third day on Christ is risen From the third day on Hope is alive From the third day on Make sure you're living from the third day on. Are you living your life in that first or second day? Are you holding on to things that fade away? Put your faith in Jesus He's God's eternal Son And live your life From the third day on From the third day on Christ is risen From the third day on Hope is alive from the third day on, we are forgiven. Make sure you're living from the third day on. First day brought us darkness, second doubt and strife. Third day brought the good news. Of the risen Christ From the third day on Christ is risen From the third day on Hope is alive From the third day on We are forgiven Make sure you're Thank you, Rick. Here, I'll turn on my mic, all right? <laughs> and we'll have offering at this time.
Please stand if you are able. And let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving for what you have given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you may be seated and we'll have our readings at this time. reading is from the 16th chapter of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites that complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. And then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there was on the surface of the wilderness a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. A responsive reading from Psalm 145. The Lord is faithful in all his words. The Lord upholds all who are Falling. The eyes of all look to you. You open your hand. 
Our second lesson comes from Ephesians chapter 4. Paul writes, I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does that mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. And the gifts that he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel this morning is recorded in the gospel of John, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. It's on page 867 in your pew Bibles. The next day... The crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not, gotten in, had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on Him that God the Father has set His seal. Then they said to Him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in Him whom He has sent. So they said to Him, What sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you going to perform? Are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. 
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, you're good and bright. I know this morning. Boy, it's just us guys this morning. Yeah. Well, you know what? If I if I would have uh, thought about a little something, I would have I would have brought a bib and a spoon and a fork. So why would, why would I have thought of do, to do that this morning? What do you do when you, when you put on a bib and they have a spoon and a fork in your hands? Eat. That's right. And why do you want to eat? Because you're hungry. Because you're hungry. So when do you get hungry? Anytime. That's right. <laughs> Anytime. I'm right there with you. Yep. We're hungry most all the time, aren't we? And, um, but what we, what we hear from Jesus is that, guess what? If you want real food, you start with your ears. You ever think about that? To take in real food, you gotta, it starts with your ears. Why, do, why is that? Because what do you have to do first? Or what, what's best to do first? How about listen? Yep, got to listen. Yeah. And being able to listen to God's Word is able to go and, and uh, get us ready to take in the real stuff so that you can make the best use of your spoon and your fork. Yeah, because we know that some food isn't all that good for us, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you wouldn't eat worms, would you? No. No, no. How about sugar cubes? Mm-hmm. Oh, that, oh, that, but you can't make a steady diet of that, can you? No. Nope. And soda pop might be a, a good thing for a treat, but you can't drink that all for everything. Don't forget your glass of milk, Okay. Yeah. So that means that you got to listen first, right? Because your mom or your dad or your grandma and your grandpa might, might say, nope, you haven't had your vegetables yet today. And that gets you ready with your spoon and your fork to really dig in. So remember that when you're hungry, what should you use first? Your... Your ears. Yep, listen. Yep, listen for what's healthy. Yeah, and with that, I'm going to invite you uh, to, to come and invite your friends too. We're going to have something outdoors. It's going to be a few weeks from now though. So, but they wanted me to announce this today. It's called Amazing Grace, Amazing Space. And we're going to be outside and we're going to be doing a, a bunch of really neat things. And, and uh, we have a gentleman by the name of uh, Larry Shekel, he's a science teacher, and he's going to be doing some experiments, so we'll have to see what he has for us out there. So on the 26th of August, which is a few weeks away, we're going to be outside. We're going to have stuff to eat, but we're going to use our ears too, okay? So remember, when you're hungry, first use your ears. ears. <laughs> okay, very good. So, oh, we better pray. We haven't prayed yet. Ooh. Let's, let's, bow our, let's bow our heads. Fold your, fold your hands. You figured about that. Boy, you were ahead of me. Very good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for food. Thank you for food. But help us to listen. That we would know the food that is healthy for us. 
Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Here you go. Now we can... This is a little something sweet. So this is a treat, right? Very good. Now let's sing our song for our kids. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what? Jordan, you might have to help me with this. We're just going to see if we can get this going again. But Jordan, if I give you a sign, you just flip to the next slide, okay? So, all right. So you can flip one. There we go. Yeah, we are privileged to be back from a couple weeks of vacation. Our family celebrated our first real road trip vacation together, put on a couple thousand miles on the old van, and everything went swell. Uh, And we traveled for hours together and seeing the sights and doing some things. And, of course, this, this picture is from our stop at Noah's Ark down in Kentucky, which was absolutely massive and fascinating. So I'll just, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Uh, hit the next slide. But you can't go on a long trip without hearing three things. The first is a question. Are we there yet? <laughs> the second is, I need to use the bathroom. And then the third one is, I'm hungry. (laughs) Now, of course, when you say, I'm hungry, you're telling the world that there's this empty place inside of you, and that this empty place actually has has been created in you. It's it's, It's an itch that will not let you go until you fill it. And in my kid's case, we had brought all kinds of things in, for, in coolers for the trip. But isn't it interesting? They weren't really... I mean, this was, this was kind of a, a, an exodus uh, experience. You know, because the manna is always there. You know, this f- fine flaky stuff on the ground, huh? That's, that's what they first uh, uh, encountered over in Exodus. And of course, that's... And they asked the question, well, what is it? Well, guess what? That's its name. That's what manna means. What is it? So, and in, in our case, the manna, or the what is it, it was things like carrot sticks and, and uh, uh, some other little nice, more healthy things. But it's interesting that they weren't exactly hungry for that. Uh, they were wanting a place to find shakes and fries, but, but guess what? They didn't die because they ate carrot sticks. They got filled, just not always the way they preferred, but hey, we made it. Uh, next slide, please. Now, our gospel account picks up just after Jesus had fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. Jesus moved on to the opposite side of the lake. The people pursued him to see if he would do more. But Jesus was very upfront with them. And Jordan, would you, kick, would you put the Scripture passage up on there? He says, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but, because I, but you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Now, what does it mean to work for or to throw your energy into food that endures to eternal life. Okay, next slide, please. To begin with, it is to know that, first of all, that you have appetites. 
And those appetites are there to give you, actually to drive you to God. G.K. Chesterton, who is an English writer and, and also a, a, an amazing theologian uh, back a few years, he once said that every man who visits a prostitute is looking for God. And I'll throw in myself, you know, any, everybody, anybody who buys, uh, you know, a uh, hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets and hopes to strike it big is looking for God as well. Every person who tries to get high on Vicodin is looking for God. Now, I realize that these people may not know at the time that they are, that they are looking for God, you, and they probably don't think, well, I want to get connected with God today, so I'm going to get high and have a fling with someone who's not my spouse. But it's a misguided attempt to fill the hunger that only God can fill. And it's an attempt that takes away life. It does not give it. And of course, then there are these voices in our heads that whisper to us that we need a better cell phone or a cooler car or whiter teeth or, or nicer skin or uh, better clothes or a better school for the kids, a warmer or cooler vacation. And before we know it, we're flailing away, spending all kinds of energy trying to fill this hunger inside of us. And Jesus tells us to understand Yes, that we are hungry. And that hunger is designed to drive us to seek Him. Okay, so Jesus cautions us, very good. Do not work, do not pour out your energy for food that perishes, that just wastes away. Pour your energy into the food that endures for eternal life. So what is it about this food that endures for eternal life? Okay, let's get the next slide. Very good. First, it's a complete gift given by Jesus himself. And no matter who we are, that gift is, is, is there for us. Secondly, its availability is guaranteed because Jesus bears the Father's seal. And that seal is a solemn guarantee that the goods will be delivered. It, Jesus is like Amazon Prime on steroids. Do not, and and that, that, guarantee, that, that delivery is there. We do not need to doubt that. Again, Jesus tells us, do not, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to, for eternal life, for which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on Him that God the Father has set His seal, which is His guarantee. Yes, in other words, Jesus delivers, and you can trust that. Next slide, please. But let's not forget the quality of what Jesus delivers. Jesus states this, for the, food, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The quality of Jesus' food is that it gives life. It gives life. More times than I want to admit, my hunger gets the best of me, and I reach for whatever is close, no matter what the quality. Set a box of donuts in front of me, and the staff makes fun of me about this, by the way. Set a box of donuts in front of me, and I'll make it my mission to make it disappear. There is no finer piece of satisfaction for me than to see an empty box where donuts used to be. But then after ingesting all of those carbs... What happens? I feel dopey and foggy-headed for the rest of the day. I lose productivity. I lose life because of my choices. See, Jesus' food doesn't take away life. It gives life. And this life-giving quality is not only affects the one who eats it, but it affects the whole world. The world is a better, more lively place because you, are, you have satisfied your hunger in Christ. How might this look? I know when I was involved in the family farming op operation, God began working in, my, in the heart of my family. And my brother and my dad and myself, and, and, and we, we considered uh, changing our farming methods and mainly to cut chemical use. 
And we moved away from what we had always done and adopted practices that were very new and very different to us. As a result, right away we were able to cut chemical use by 60%. And the land responded in a positive way with less erosion, healthier soil structure, and less rocks to pick, which was a real plus for me. Now, I'm sure a number of you have similar stories you might be able to tell where God began working in, in, uh, working in you concerning your family or getting out of debt or changing a business practice or going after some injustice or joining an outreach effort. Jesus' bread gives life, not only to you but the whole world. And you can see how what God has done in your heart ha- affects not just you, It affects everything, and it's amazing. Uh, One uh, flip, uh, next slide, please. Now, here's a person you probably don't know, but a a gal by the name of Mary Poplin. She is a professor of education and dean of the School of of Educational Studies at Claremont Graduate University in California, a very prestigious place. uh, But she has an interesting story to tell. She attended a Methodist church as a child, but she began searching other spiritual traditions, including Buddhism and transcendental meditation and even uh, telepathic, telepathic attempts to bend spoons. And she began t- teaching at Claremont, where a Christian friend encouraged her on her spiritual journey. And eventually, Back in 1993, she became a Christian. And in her own words, this, this was really the last f- step that she needed to take. She, quote, in January, my mother wanted me to go to North Carolina where she had grown up. We went to this little Methodist church, and we didn't go there because she wanted to be religious. She just wanted to see her friends. When we got there, I was really moved just to go up to the altar and give my life to the Lord. It wasn't even an altar call. It was a communion call. The guy said, you don't have to be a member of any church to take communion. You just have to believe that Jesus lived, that he died for your sins, and that you have to want him in your life. And when he said that, I was so powerfully moved that I actually thought, even if a tornado rips through this building, I'm going to get that communion. I took the communion, and I didn't even listen to that guy. I knelt down and I said, please, come get me. Please, come get me. Please, come get me. And when I took the communion and I said that, I felt free. I felt like tons of things had been lifted off of me. And that was her beginning. Now she plays an active role in the Veritas Project, a forum with uh, the purpose of witnessing to the truth of God and the wisdom of God to educators and college and graduate students. That work that God has done in her has changed the world. She's now a sought-after speaker and has written articles and books that have touched many. What kind of bread does Jesus give? I mean, what's the quality of this bread? It gives life to the world, not just to us. Next slide. Today we share in our Lord's Supper, and it stands to reason that we hear again Jesus' words that that to the hungry crowd that the true bread of God, the real authentic bread that is able to nourish the hungry ache in your soul, is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And those who listened to Jesus that day asked Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus then said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You know, God's desire for you and for me is to live in that kind of satisfaction, that kind of confidence, and that kind of unshakable peace. Next slide. But let's be honest. We are sinners. 
Our appetites are difficult. We can do horrible things when when these appetites get the best of us. It's our appetites that put Jesus on the cross. And for that very purpose, Jesus goes to the cross to break the destructive power of our hunger. And He does that, that you may know what true freedom is and that your neighbors in our world can know freedom and the purpose of what it means to be tr- truly satisfied, to know what it means to love God, to trust Him, and how it feels also to hurt God and how it feels also to be completely forgiven. God desires you to walk in joy and to appreciate the beautiful things you already have, to be able to share your talents and to let go of things in a way that answers the prayer of those who tr- are truly in need. Jesus says, next slide please, Do not work for, do not put your energy into the food that perishes, but put your energy into the food that endures for eternal life. And we reply, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus then answers, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Next slide, please. Now is the time to come to him, to believe that promise, and by God's strength, let us all keep and live the faith. Amen. Please stand if you are able. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are a hungry people. Deep inside each one of us are hungers and desires that that at times pull us to do and pursue things that do not last. As we come to you with every care and concern, lead us to yourself that we may be filled with you, Lord, in your mercy. And Gracious Father, you open wide your hand and provide for every living creature. Open our eyes to see your providing hand at work as we gather around the dinner table or, you know, the the meal on our tables is, is your glory being displayed to us and a true witness of how much you care for us. So may we honor you as we share every meal. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we lift to you those who are struggling with hungers and passions that are leading them astray, lusts and addictions, ambitions that are stripping life from them. Be their rescue. As you call us to action, give us the words to speak, the wisdom to act, that they might be restored in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you are the one who raises up those who are falling. We lift you, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria and other countries where great persecution uh, has erupted. People are being maimed and killed at the hand of those who do not follow you. Thousands are fleeing to other countries. Raise them up in a way that shows your enemies that your kingdom cannot be shaken. Lord, in your mercy, you are a caring Father. And we lift to you those in our own land who are suffering, whether it be wildfires or tornadoes or other other destructions, other things that are happening. Empower our firefighters and all our rescue workers to to do not only their work, but your work. Bring your people together to provide comfort and care and help to rebuild homes and lives. You are the one who lifts those who are bowed down. We especially pray this day for those struggling right here in our own congregation for for Ralph Cox and Grace Peterson, Sandy Holly and Larry Adams, Brian Hobbick and Taylor Melby, for Pastor Bill and June Hicks, Rita Bernstead, 
Marlene Schultz and Zoe Bolden, as they all need your healing touch. And we lift to you uh, Brian and Greg Rice and their families as they mourn the loss of their father. We join with the family of family and friends as, as they pray for Bill and Leanne, Chris and David, and for those that we name in our hearts at this time. ask that you give them relief from all that ails them. And Lord, we pray that you keep this congregation under your gracious care. Guide the church council as they listen to your direction and as they seek your wisdom to shepherd us to walk in your way. Let us witness boldly and faithfully to how you have changed us and, and have given us life. Open the hearts of our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers and family members who, who do not follow you. Open them to hear our witness as we speak your promises to them. It is into your hands, merciful Father, that we commend all for whom we pray this day, trusting in your mercy through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we gather at the Lord's table today, let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you that you raise us up as a new creation and send us out as laborers into the harvest that people may know eternal life through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Therefore, we join the angels and all the saints and proclaim these words of unending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of truth and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Because you are one with us, O Christ, make us one with you as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please follow the instructions of our ushers if you be seated at this time, and I'd like to invite our helpers to please come forward.
Please stand if you are able. Let us thank our Lord for his gift to us. Gracious Lord, you have nourished us with your Son, the true bread of heaven. Strengthen us to serve one another and to be your witnesses wherever we are sent. In the name of the risen Christ, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Looks like the sun might be peeking out there a little bit, but uh, as, as an announcement, uh, I, I don't know how many announcements do we have? Not all that many right at the moment. Yeah, excuse me, I'm going to cough, I think. But uh, yeah, with that, again, um, the prayer garden has, has been done. We still have the pergola to set up, and uh, so it looks like the sun's coming out a little bit out there, so I'd say take a little walk down and enjoy that. But with that, go in peace, serve the Lord.